Welcome to the solo cast of Firecode Tech. In these episodes, it's just going to be me, your host, Gus Gagliardi. There's going to be a range of topics, but I'm going to talk about specific technologies, installation standards, codes and how they work, as well as some other interesting topics that don't neatly fit inside of the context of a normal interview. Hello, all. Welcome to episode 10 of the solo cast of Fire Code Tech. On this episode, we have the FE and PE exam prep tips. So on this episode, I wanted to give some tips and tricks for passing the fundamentals of engineering exam and the professional engineering exam. So people are gearing up to study for the professional engineering exam, and I wanted to give five tips in the free episode of the solo cast for how to pass the FE and the PE. Really, both of these, all of these uh, topics are interchangeable. So for these exams, you're learning how to pass a test and how to study. And so it really, there are a very similar things that you are learning how to do and practice. Before we get started, if you could please be so kind to go give me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to all the episodes so you never miss them. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm glad you guys are tuning in. I've been seeing a steady increase in listeners, so I'm really excited about it. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media. We probably post most consistently on LinkedIn. All right, let's get into the show. So my first tip for anyone taking the PE, the FE, or really any test for professional certification is to be very well versed on what the test material is based on. So the PE and the FE have syllabi. So they will tell you the percentages um, and weights of the different testing subjects. As a piece of background, I passed my FE in 2018 and my PE in 2019 in October, the last paper exam. So I pulled these stats off the FE website, but this is just some of the information that you need to become acquainted with when you're looking into, you know, looking at taking some professional exams. So it says the FE includes 110 questions and the exam appointment is six hours long. It goes on to say that there is a non-disclosure agreement that will take about approximately two minutes, a tutorial that's approximately eight minutes, an exam which has about five hours and 20 minutes, a scheduled break which is about 25 minutes. This is a high-level overview and, you know, your exam experience might not take as much time as this. Uh, I finished early. Uh, really you go at your own pace, you take your break at your own pace, uh, you will take the test at one of these Pearson View test centers, approved test centers, so you'll be in a room with people taking different exams for, um, different professional certifications. So I pulled the syllabi for the FE for other disciplines, fundamentals of engineering, um, exam for other disciplines, computer-based testing. This is the one I took and the one I passed, but... I just wanted to, since our first topic is to be familiar with the material the test is based on, I just wanted to go over an example of what the syllabi will say for what the test is based on. So it says 8 to 12 questions on mathematics, 6 to 9 questions on probability and statistics, 5 to 8 questions on chemistry, 4 to 6 questions on instrumentation and controls, 5 to 8 questions on engineering ethics and societal impacts, six to nine questions on safety, health, and the environment, six to nine questions on engineering engineering economics, nine to 14 questions on statics, nine to 14 questions on dynamics, nine to 14 questions on strength, and mater- strength of materials, six to nine questions on materials, 12 to 18 questions on fluid mechanics, six to nine questions on bath- basic electrical engineering, and 9 to 14 questions on thermodynamics and heat transfer. So why I'm showing you this is because I want to um, just basically show you that you can get a, an idea of what are the 
topics with the most questions and then rank them in order from the highest percentage of your grade to pass and then study accordingly. Don't spend all your time focusing on a subject that might only have six questions or less um, or, you know, like a four or five question is not going to be the bulk of your material. So study accordingly. Well, you know why I want to talk about this is because um, I believe in professional certification. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to have professional certification. You know, in my career, I've seen a, a benefit to uh, compensation and, um, you know, just having uh, more respect at the company that I work for as I've made progress um, with certification over time. It's It's been a huge uh, tailwind for my career. And so I, I'm a huge proponent of people going and getting certified. There's well-documented statistics for people who get the PE in fire protection engineering and how that leads to about a 10 to 20 percent um, compensation bump um, across the industry. So SFPE takes a survey of the engineers who are working now and at different levels of their career and releases a report on that that you can pay for. I don't think it's too expensive to pick up, but it it would be helpful if you were thinking about um, making a job switch or wanting to make a case to your boss for increased compensation. But I just wanted to touch on that since it illustrates a concrete data that shows that people who are certified um, are compensated more. And uh, I think that in itself is a pretty good reason to go after some of these professional certifications, um, as well as letting everybody in the in industry know um, that you are competent, that you have the base level of qualifications in order to uh, basically play ball in the architecture and construction industry in the United States, at least. My second piece of advice is to um, take a prep course if you can spare the expense. I know that uh, FE prep courses and uh, FPE prep courses are expensive, but uh, if you think of it as investing in yourself and if you think of it as um, getting the most out of your time for your studying, your time is valuable. So if you can pass the test your first time instead of taking the test uh, three times, um, having to pay the fees each time, having to study two or three months each time if you think about it as a an, your investment of time and your investment of money in that regard your your time is worth a lot of money and that's career opportunity that you are not taking full advantage of by not grabbing these certifications as early as you can i took prep courses for the fe and the pe and um, here's what i found helpful about them i i really liked um, that they would go over like an industry expert who does this on a yearly basis and gets, you know, a lot of times paid to do this will help you with common pitfalls, best practices. Um, they'll demonstrate the easy questions. So um, I always tell people that prep courses help you understand like common graph and chart questions and they might help you get some of the you know, not technically difficult questions, but um, they might help you with the fundamentals of a particular chart or graph or um, portion of the subject that you're working on. A lot of prep courses also will guarantee that if you don't pass the first time that you can come back and take the prep course again. So, you know, if you really do need some help, some extra help, and you have you're struggling with the test material then you will be able to um, go through all your lectures and information uh, second or yeah hopefully not a third but it's the second time tip number three take practice time tests this really you know uh, tip three and tip four are bit around the same thing that is my number one recommendation for people 
Um, tip four is do as many practice problems as you possibly can. The test is based on answering questions. In both of these tests, the FE and the Fire Protection Engineering exam, and really any certification exam is, uh, can you pass the test? And, and the test is made of questions. So no, no matter how much notes you take over the subject, you know, if you're not doing problems and you're not doing problems in the way that you will need to do problems for the exam, you're not spending your time um, the most effective way possible, in my opinion. So I think that the number one way to increase your chances of doing well on exams is to do as many prep problems as possible. Um, is a wide a variety. So, you know, um, a lot of times there'll be variance in how difficult some of the practice problems are. And so you need to do as many practice problems as you can. I did for the fire protection PE exam, I, I did hundreds and hundreds of practice problems. I did every Meyer fire practice problem you can think of. I did all his weekly sessions. I, you know, did the practice problems out of the book. The more practice problems you do, the more confident you're going to be in your ability to do the test. Tip three is take um, time tests. So maybe I'll switch these in the show notes, but time testing is important because, you know, if you're used to just doing the problems in a vacuum and not keeping in mind that on average you have or whatever it is, two to two to six minutes to get these problems done. There's usually it's less time. Usually, planning on two to three minutes to get these questions done and move on. And generally, you want to solve them faster than that. And then if you can't solve them, you want to circle back to them. Why practice tests is also important. Is you know. One of the things to practice when you're timing yourself and doing these problems in similar sample sizes and sets that you will have on the exam is to practice the endurance of taking one of these tests. So it's it's mentally, you know, it's mentally and sometimes physically draining to, you know, sit for uh, three hours, four hours, uh, and to buckle down and do these problems so you need to practice this muscle so that when you get into the test time you're not just absolutely floored by having to do this many problems and and you're not unfamiliar with the process of doing a triage of sorts on the problems you can solve the problems you can't solve and you know, going in for and spending the most time on the problems that you know how to solve and then circling back to the questions that are more difficult that you, if you have time for at the end that you can you know, double down and really try to see if you can answer them correctly. My last tip would be to plan to study. You know, don't try, you can't cram really for uh, a fire protection engineering prep, or I mean, fire protection engineering exam, professional engineer exam, it's not going to work. Uh, you know, I wasn't the best studier in college, but uh, when I started having to really buckle down and, you know, for my professional development, take some of these tests outside of school, I kind of figured it out, but you have to be disciplined in your approach to these tests, you know, I would do it on my lunch break. I would just say, hey, I'm going to spend whatever, 20 minutes, 30 minutes on my lunch break every day, and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do a couple problems or read a section of the review manual or prep book, um, you know, prep course work, and would, would just, if you have that scheduled times, and then on the weekend, I would have time as well, maybe as much as I could fit in, you know, with the schedule, but always I would wake up, spend an hour to two hours just early in the morning when I'm fresh before you get consumed with your day 
and having these uh, this discipline to study and this plan to study is huge for you're not gonna you're not gonna pass it on accident or there's a very small chance that you're just gonna you know stumble through one of these exams you know maybe if you are a genius or something but it, uh, it was never like that for me I always had to be disciplined and I think that even if you could stumble into a pass, it's poor practice because um, eventually there will be something in life that's so difficult that you will need to rely on the discipline to carry you through. And that's a lesson I had to learn the hard way through cram and for tests at the last minute um, during college. But So that concludes my first five tips for the PE exam and FE exam and really for any professional certification course or certification and so I hope you enjoyed the episode and if you want to hear more don't forget you can check out patreon.com slash firecode tech I'll have five more tips and tricks for studying for professional certification exams um, I'm releasing the solo cast Every time I release a solo cast, I release a bonus episode, most of the time on the topic. Sometimes I'll have to switch topics, but so I'm releasing at least two bonus episodes a month on the Patreon, and I expect to start bringing more bonus content there. So if you like what you're hearing on Fire Code Tech, uh, go check out the Patreon. Thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to share the episode with a friend if you enjoyed it. Don't forget that fire protection and life safety is serious business. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are by no means a professional consultation or a codes and standards interpretation. Be sure to contact a licensed professional if you are getting involved with fire protection and or life safety. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.